Okay, here we go. We got the quarterfinals of the Fall 5K for North America. And we've got Daniel versus Lion Blaze. Daniel looking good in recent 1v1 history. Had to make it through the Swiss, though, 3 and 1. Was not able to beat Jack in the Swiss stage. Lion Blaze scraping through at the end of Swiss, 3 and 2. Only one of them can move on to the semifinals and inch their way closer to the prize money, which is guaranteed after winning this round, but also a chance at top two and cross-regional 1v1 gameplay. That is where the real reward is given. Look at this flick from Lion Blaze to start this game. Lion Blaze, known for his flicks, is going to bring him out right away at the start of game number one. Daniel has had a few different play styles that he's been playing in recent memory. The Daniel that dominated in years past, I think it's been maybe even full years now since he was, I would say, number one in the world, was super high-flying, mechanical, fast player, and was the one who maybe excelled at that the most. Joria is another name that comes up around that time who is maybe better at that style than Daniel. But recently, winning a tournament off of the back of very straightforward, smart 1v1 gameplay, which of course, you always have to have as a top ones player. You can't just do it with your mechanics alone. But Daniel really making a point to show that he didn't need his mechanics. Barely air rolling in his way to winning the Pro Drops North American 1v1 Invitational. But can he win the Fall 5k? Daniel historically has done well in North American tournaments on my stream. The most recent North American tournament won by First Killer, but Daniel wasn't there. Daniel had to miss that one while on his trip to the Major at that time. This time around, he's here and so is First Killer. Will it be a matchup between the two of them in the Grand Final? We'll have to see, but Daniel right now has to get past Lion Blaze if he wants to make it there, and Lion Blaze doing a good job on defense. Daniel having to pull out all the stops before eventually making it through, and we are seeing a quintessential game in the first minute 30 of Lion Blaze, which is defense and flicks. He's been able to score off of powerful flicks and has somehow been able to hold one of the best scores in the one's game to a single goal in the first couple minutes here. Daniel, his wall to air dribbles. This is what he sliced and diced many defenders in when he was at his one's peak. And this time, he's able to get Lion Blaze to miss. He gets the reset so clean. If you haven't watched a ton of 1v1 before, you might be wondering why Lion Blaze was just flopping around in net. But that's because when Daniel gets that reset, there are so many different options that he can threaten. And you really have to assume if you're Lion Blaze that he is going to pull it off. And it makes it possible to score. This is such a crazy cancel. I guess he must have single jumps, right? Did he really cancel a front flip there? These cancels blow my mind if that's the case. Daniel, a fourth goal. Talking about Lion Blaze's defense and how he had been held scoreless, or at least limited in the first couple of minutes, and now he's racking him up. Delay kickoff for Lion Blaze. Delay and wave dash, which is important to point out because most wave dash kickoffers don't actually delay. They just run straight into the ball and use it to rush out of center field. Lion Blaze adding a bit of a variation to it and get patience on the goal line. Almost led to an opportunity. Actually, it is going to lead to an opportunity. This demo, assuming Daniel doesn't get the perfect spawn, should lead to a goal. I think the only way that Daniel gets this save is if he spawns directly in front of the ball. I think there's a chance basically right on top of Lion Blaze. And I'm not sure how that works in Rocket League, I'll be honest. Whether or not if a player is sitting on a spawn point, does the game not spawn you there? And then what happens if a player is sitting on every spawn point? They have to spawn you in. I honestly don't know the answer to that in my many years of watching Rocket League. Lion Blaze, another demo. Disco play has been working out for him. You say if it's occupied, it doesn't work, but in 3v3, there's enough cars to camp everybody on all the spawn points, right? What happens then?
Delay kickoff again for Lion Blaze. Delaying the kickoff is a way to concede a chance at an advantage. If you ask me, I think Lion Blaze delaying as much as he is, is basically recognizing that he doesn't want to meet Daniel at the midfield on the kickoff. He'd rather have a much more neutral result. I think if you go take standard kickoffs, there's a good chance you win them and potentially score yourself. But also, you're risking losing them, and it seems like Lion Blaze doesn't want to do either. He's got faith in his, you know, midfield gameplay and just wants a more neutral guaranteed kickoff. So here, he loses the kickoff slightly, but what he doesn't do is he doesn't lose it directly into his net. And that's really all he's hoping for when he's going for this strong of a delay. The problem is that Daniel is normally so good with any sort of free possessions. He got a reset off this ball and ends up continuing it for his fifth. Daniel left with, or sorry, Lion Blaze left with absolutely nothing left over. Oh, are there six spawn locations? That would that would be the solution. Unless you're playing Chaos. Got you again. Lion Blaze leaving this net wide open. I mean... <laughs> Sometimes I get surprised, I'll be honest. Sometimes defenders and players in this game surprise me. This felt like a humongous mistake from Lion Blaze, driving all the way to the corner. And turns out it was. He wasn't really anywhere close. So not sure what he was hoping for. I mean, he's got to know that you let Daniel air dribble, and he's going to be able to score. You can't just rely on him missing that. He's going to turtle after this double. And this is the second time that Lion Blaze has just missed that corner boost. I mean... He missed it on that previous save attempt. I don't think it mattered. I don't think he was anywhere close. But here, it definitely matters. If he grabs that 100, I mean, I also just flipped past the ball. A couple really interesting mistakes from Lineblaze that I'm not used to seeing from him. And I don't know if that's nerves or what. He has played so many of these high-stakes games, I can't imagine that, you know, he's too shook by the moment right now. But Daniel... Gonna get a demo and score off of it from his back corner. Needed to rush the ball a little bit, but didn't hurt that Lion Blaze got maybe the worst possible spawn. This should be a quick retort though from Lion Blaze. Daniel in the Octane. His Bot, no arrow gameplay style did come when he played the Fennec, and we saw when he switched to the Fennec <laughs> that it, he did the same thing again. He's trying to see how many flip resets he can get on his way to this shot, but maybe prioritized the flip resetting as opposed to getting an actually tough shot to save. Looking for a double now, and Daniel finds his way through. Has to keep the ball high to prevent Lion Blaze from being able to clear it as he sits down in net with 30 boost. Try to get the read, but it's hard to get that as you recover back to the net. So 9-6, 30 seconds means Lion Blaze's only hope is three quick goals off kickoff. And he actually has a pretty decent chance here. Daniel able to cover the low 50 well, and I think with as little boost as Lion Blaze does have, not a chance that he scores this and follows it up for a few more. So will be Daniel taking game number one. That'll be five straight wins against Lion Blaze in their recent matches. Went 4-0, I believe. It might have been, I can't remember if it was a best of five. No, I think it was a best of seven. So I think it was 4-0, and now he own goals to make it look a little bit closer, make it 5-0 against Lion Blaze. But 1-0 in this series, a best of five. Daniel needs to finish it out. And right now, certainly on track. Remember YouTube, every subscription for the next month adds one dollar to the prize pool at the end of the year so please subscribe wait are we, is that lion in a breakout <laughs> lion blaze switching to the breakout for game number two and honestly i don't blame him like i just mentioned before we saw five straight losses i'm pretty sure from lion blaze to daniel something needs to change even though he was pretty close in that previous game He's decided what he needs is the breakout, and I can't remember the last time I saw anybody in the breakout. 
I'm trying to remember if maybe I saw Lion Blaze and like Turf Wars or something play the breakout. But it is back. The car that I first picked to play when I downloaded the game back in 2015. Coolest looking car if you asked me until I learned I had to play Octane. Then of course, I have switched to play that pretty much since then. But looks like Lion Blaze's flicks still work in the breakout as good as ever as he flicks top left with a ton of power. What is the hitbox for a breakout? Is it a hybrid? Is it Dominus? What is it? I haven't seen somebody use it, but I know chat. Chat always knows. It's Plank? No way. Wait, I, I see a mix of Dominus and Plank. It's its own hitbox. Breakout is Breakout. No way! <laughs> Wait, how many cars do I have the Breakout hitbox? It's Breakout hitbox. This goes to show how little people play this car that I have no idea. I did not know this answer. And now people are saying that they're lying. Okay, I can't, there's too many people in chat today. I can't believe any of you. But I think the coolest thing, the coolest answer would be that Breakout has its own hitbox. So that is the world I'm going to live in for at least the next two hours before I can verify. But so far, it's working out for Lion Blaze. Up to zero. Daniel with his classic dribble. I always mention it, but I, I, it does bear repeating. Daniel, I feel, was the first person taking those back corner boosts and then full field dribbles and making it make sense in ones. For a long time, a dribble, especially starting from that far away, just had no business in the 1v1 game. This time, Daniel is going to go for a nice air dribble bump. The tried and true method. Slamming Lion Blaze into the net in the process. Daniel lost his kickoff. Lion Blaze has also regained some of his confidence in the kickoff after going to the breakout. Pretty sure he's went to the past couple. He definitely went to this last one. Not a great first touch for Daniel. Just barely is he able to hold on to it and prevent it from being taken away. It's actually kind of a miracle that Daniel somehow has possession still. But a good challenge from Lion Blaze could end that. What a great catch. That was a smooth catch as Daniel tried to tap it to the corner. Lion Blaze just scooped it up perfectly as he stole the boost and eventually gets to his spot because of the boost deal. Daniel forced to play on this one pad that he just picked up and it's not going to happen. This Lion Blaze puts it underneath the crossbar and is praying that the breakout is the answer that it has been so far. There's a delay. I thank you Joey Slow and Popiel for the prime and the tier one respectively. It's Daniel going for a double. This time it does get saved. Oh my god, of course it just works out. <laughs> I was going to say, doubles not often are done in 1v1, especially from that position when Lion Blaze could just read it and be prepped for it. But <laughs> all it takes is just a little friendly high five to finish it off. Excuse me, Lion Blaze. I'd like to tap this in. A lot of that comes to credit because of... Uh, or the credit belongs to Daniel's double, which was very fast and tough to read. I mean, it was an incredible save from Lion Blaze, despite the fact that I was suggesting that you don't see people going for those kind of doubles very often. Daniel did it well enough to make it worthwhile, and even though Lion Blaze did miraculously get the first save, he was not able to follow it back up. Lion Blaze chasing this down despite not having boost. Felt like it was better for him to be on the ball than Daniel, but now he's forced to leave, so Daniel will start a dribble from just outside his net, and well-timed challenge from Lion Blaze. There was really nothing Daniel could do. Watching it from his perspective, he was right not to use his flip because Lion Blaze was going to get there before he could get it out of the challenge's trajectory. Lion with 58 does not need to waste too much controlling this ball. And he recognizes that as well. As he catches it and carries away. He's trying to chase Daniel down. The game is going to credit him with a shot there. I'm not sure that that would have actually gone in. It still was in Daniel's best interest to keep it out. Oh my goodness, the boost spawn just a second too late. Daniel trying to roll over this corner. 
And right as he got... I wanted to see if the camera didn't show it, but right as he went past it, it spawned. And if he had that, he gets that save with relative ease, but because it doesn't show up... Ooh, Line Blaze. Delay, Wave Dash. This is the most successful version of this that he's done. 5-2, Daniel. Worst case scenario for him, getting launched up off the ball is not what you want as a result of the kickoff. And I wonder if Daniel's starting to get a read on this delay at all. If he tried to push that past the North Lion, just messed up by single jumping far out of the line of the shot. Soft touch from Lion Blaze to control after the save. He's got another carry. Daniel, he doesn't want to see that breakout flick again. He knows what happens when he gives Lion Blaze a bit of space. But the problem now is that Daniel does need a ton of goals in a row. He's just going to be very aggressive. I imagine we're going to start to see Lion recognizing that and flicking early if possible. Daniel probably needs to score on this possession right here. So why not go to Old Faithful? He actually saved it himself. He pushed it too high off the backboard. He gave himself no chance. It might have been hard to score without that final touch, but it was impossible once he directed it off the backboard. And so, 20 seconds left to go. Three goals. I don't think we're going to see it for Daniel. Lion Blaze found the answer, and the answer comes in the form of a car rarely used, not just in ones, but in Rocket League at all, in the breakout. Have to imagine we'll see it from him again. Don't know if Daniel will stick to Octane. We've seen him playing the Octane and the Fennec fairly equally. Daniel scores to make it a two-goal game, but it'll be a tie series as we head to game number three. Game three, Daniel still in the octane. Lion Blaze sticking with the breakout, and why not? No reason to go back now, but has Daniel figured out the breakout style? I don't know if it matters when he's hitting shots like this. Daniel, when he wins those kickoffs into a clean wall to air dribble, that is nightmare fuel for defenders. As Lion Blaze showed, he's able to stop them more often than I would say most do, but still not a position that you can get away with giving to Daniel too often. Daniel able to save this flick and in and out of the net, saving all his momentum which is important for being able to challenge Lion Blaze and keep him from keeping that possession going. That being said, he tried his best. Now he's forced off the ball with zero boost. Daniel trying to match Lion Blaze's flick here. Hasn't had that same kind of power. It seemed like Daniel was thinking about a bump, but the timing just did not work out because Lion Blaze wouldn't come to the ground. But <laughs> Daniel's going to land on top of this one. He actually almost brought it out of the net, I feel like. He wanted to do it for fun as Lion Blaze tries to challenge early and can't. He definitely could have made that much more um, guaranteed. But he wanted to flop on the ball. Lion Blaze. Ooh, an unfortunate bounce on the back wall. Definitely a good win for him on the delay. Wave dash kickoff, Daniel. Full speed into his wall to air dribble. He does this so quick. It takes him no time to set it up. Look at that great first touch. Lion Blaze having to race back home. Not going to matter as Daniel places it right past the middle of the net. And it's on a roll here at the start of game number three. Daniel, interesting that he's on ball cam as he seemingly trying to chase Lion Blaze down. Is he going to be able to keep this out? He's not. Lion Blaze able to punish Daniel with a nice backflip. Did not have time to let it come back down. Tried to intercept it, but ended up just helping it in. Daniel from the ceiling ends up faking the musty. Lion Blaze 
forced to react. I mean, you, you've seen what Daniel's been doing. If he doesn't jump, Daniel's just going to score while Lion Blaze sits and watches. So he tries his best to put a hand up. But Daniel has that read as well. This time, Daniel's wall to air dribble does not work out. Lion Blaze able to stop it. But that's certainly been a rare occasion so far in this match. That's another good way to stop it. Lion Blaze can tell now that that's what Daniel wants to do. And why not go all in and dive on him before he gets it set up? He's been able to set it up the past few times with absolutely no pressure. And Lion Blaze finally changes that. Daniel will get midfield boost. You see the camera checks to see what is Lion Blaze going to do. He does stay on the ball, and Daniel's trying to show him that that was a mistake, and he did exactly that. Lion Blaze could have backed off and gone to the corner, but he tried to stay on ball, and Daniel immediately takes it to the skies at full speed, and a low boost Lion Blaze never stood a chance. Delay, wave dash, kickoff again. Daniel looking to try and just win a 50. The ball was a bit too close to the orange half to go for his conventional dribbles. So he's just hoping to find a way through. What a save. Wow. Waiting until the final moment to save it. But the ball never went all the way through. And look at these counterattacks. These are so fast. Lion Blaze, like I said, he's one of the better defenders. He's one of the better recoverers. He's just aware on defense in general, but he's never ready for how fast Daniel is. He is getting such good first touches on the ball to start these air dribbles and then keeping them at absolute max speed the whole way. And it makes Lion Blaze just look silly. I mean, most players that he's playing against, he doesn't need to go straight to net. He might have time to grab boost, but not against this guy. And now Lion Blaze letting him come all the way to net once again. But of course, that's because Daniel was threatening the whole way. So we talked about when Lion Blaze does put a hand up and he goes flying past the ball. This time he waits, he tries to be patient and Daniel just jumps his way slowly to the net before finally making the outplay once he gets there. So really seems like the only answer is to prevent him from getting to those spots, which Lion Blaze has tried to do. But like we said, we, we just watched him air dribble across the whole map as soon as Lion Blaze stayed aggressive for just a moment too long. So. Lion Blaze figured it out. Actually, this is a great shot. A little assist from Daniel. He figured it out in game two. But I'm not sure what he could do here to slow down Daniel the way he's playing in the past few minutes. Daniel not going to this kickoff. Lion Blaze not able to chase it down, but does have the boost again. Look at this catch. It's such a clean catch. And he's hoping that he can just flick and punish. And he does! Look at this flick! This is a really smooth catch to flick. He catches Daniel at a rare moment when he doesn't have boost. Even though Daniel was max speed, it wasn't enough to stop the breakout from launching the ball over the top of him. Kickoff losses are not going to help, especially when Daniel gets to get a wall to air dribble right away. Daniel does go low 50 this time around and is able to maintain control of the ball. Lion Blaze with a minute left to go. Maybe has no choice but to be this aggressive. But he's he got zero boost now because of it after making the save. Daniel is once again going to try and beat him in a race across the entire map. A bit too slow of a dribble this time though, as he just drops it down. Nice bump from Lion. He just doesn't have quite enough boost. If he had a couple pads already, he could get up to the point where the ball was peaking and shoot it right away. But he just didn't have quite enough to do so. Had to pick up a couple pads instead. So 30 seconds. Gonna need to be three straight goals. Oh my goodness, I was gonna say, I think Daniel might have just given him one. Even though he had no business getting any, but he did sneak it past Lion before he could score. This one might be a free one. Daniel trying his best to recover, and he does. Wow. 
Daniel just all over the map right now. Seems like there's nothing Lion can do. 8-4. Been back and forth in the series, but certainly momentum is in favor of Space Station Gaming Daniel right now. Will we see the breakout again from Lion Blaze? Or does he have a new trick up his sleeve? Game number four. Breakout Lion. Now one and one with Daniel. Not a bad scoreline, but can he bring it all the way back? It helps that he's able to hold off the first air dribble from Daniel in this game four. Nice use of the flip to finish off the bump. There will be no Daniel in the net to make the save this time around. Daniel trying to be real patient. Very close shadow from him to not challenge. Normally a player going in that deep takes him off the map. Lion losing possession here. Tons of space between him and the ball now forced to let Daniel get to his spot and Daniel has to reset to push the ball over the top of Lion. Good challenge from him. Definitely one of the best possible results he could get from that dribble. Recognizing now that trying to react to Daniel in net maybe isn't the way despite the fact that Lion Blaze is maybe one of the best to do it. Might just be better off trying to meet him early and hoping that he can force Daniel to just shoot high, miss high, do something that he can then follow up much easier. Lions had a tough time handling these counterattacks from Daniel. He's just been too speedy. Probably not a smart idea for Lion Blaze to be facing sideways so deep. Daniel's half but easier to say when he's probably played loads of games where he can get away with that against different opponents tried to get a soft touch to himself right near the sidewall that he could follow up didn't get anything he's still gonna have a pretty good opportunity air dribble bump and Daniel taken out in net two different air dribble bumps on his way to a 2-1 lead Lion Blaze catch top left. Kickoff win. Converted for a goal. Daniel, not sure what his plan here was as he tapped that ball into his corner. He was hoping he's going to be able to follow it up. Obviously, he was not hoping that Lion Blaze would catch it and flick it top left in his net. That has been the kind of speed priority that he's been playing with. We saw First Killer in the Swiss yesterday playing with a similar kind of priority where almost just had faith that if the ball is moving fast and my car is moving fast, I'll figure it out. That time, Daniel didn't figure it out. Lionblaze could not intercept here. Daniel able to pop it over the top of him to get his second goal. Daniel, this time the kickoff goes in his favor. Line Blaze forced to play off this one pad and Daniel knows not to shoot early. Instead, pop it out to the dead center of the field where everything's available. A late kickoff again, Line Blaze trying to stop this trend. Not the best of first touches. Too lateral of a play, you can't get underneath it. He's trying to find a way to make it work by going at Daniel over and over again in the corner, but it's gonna be Daniel who escapes. Flips into the reset and once again is forced to push the ball high. 
Talking about those early challenges from Lion, obviously a very intentional change of defensive strategy that he's decided. And it's paying off so far. Might not pay off forever as Daniel starts to get a read on it, but Lion Blaze with the lead. Daniel stealing the boost at the midfield. Thought maybe he was going to get Lion Blaze to back off the ball. I think I saw him driving up the side wall there. But Lion Blaze had more than enough to make the play. Dan not going to take his wall to air dribble this time. Just going to power shot. It was an awkward setup, but one that I still feel like Daniel would take under most circumstances. But he's had enough of not being able to score him. And the problem is Lion Blaze has become very effective. His shooting opportunities have been converted more often than not as of late. That shadow has not been working for Daniel. Lion able to stay patient and shoot at the right moment. It looks like we might have a game five if this keeps going up. 6-3. I mean, this is pretty early to call it. 146 is a ton of time. But Lion Blaze, I mean, it's more about the momentum that he's had and the mental edge it seems like he's gained here in the past couple minutes. Daniel needs something to shake it off. I feel like he can get past Lion Blaze again. This pinch would be not a bad way to do it, but Lion Blaze able to react as the ball goes screaming towards his net. A fake challenge off the wall this time. He comes back down to the ground and it's not going to work out. Maybe if he had a bit more boost, because if so, he could have used it to push himself back onto the wall, but without it, he just kind of has to float to the ground. Daniel trying to steal in the corner. Not going to win that steal. Can Lion Blaze convert this, though? Daniel very quick. Yeah, Lion Blaze does. I was going to say, I was still impressed with Daniel's ability to pop out to the midfield and have 100 get to a good shadow position quick. But the problem with these shadows is that Lion has had the edge and now has a three-goal edge in this game number four. Daniel, long shot available. He's not one to miss an opportunity like this. Well, oh, Lion Blaze just went so all in. Zero boost and chasing somebody down in that corner. Lion said, I'm either bumping him or I'm getting scored on. So I'm just going to go for it. And it did not pay off. What a kickoff win, though. The kickoffs earlier, when he didn't delay them, were really troublesome. Daniel very intentionally trying to get on the left side of that ball, push it right. And that played right into Lion Blaze, who was more goal side's hand. 8-5, still a window for Daniel to bring this back. But with this kickoff going into Lion Blaze's possession, that certainly hurts a lot. Great flick. Tons of power from Lion Blaze, who's going to try and regain the ball and just play a bit of keep away. Daniel, who knows the urgency in the final 30 seconds, he's not going to let him get away with that. And now he's letting this bounce slowly. Lion Blaze has the read. I'm surprised that Daniel went near post. It was going to be a really tough save for Lion anywhere else in net, which I almost feel like Daniel knew that and assumed that Lion Blaze would have gone hardcore to the far opposite side of the net, knowing that surely that's where Daniel's going to place it. And then he maybe tried to get one step ahead and put it behind him. But I mean, Lion Blaze, he had the perfect read as he often does in net. Looking like we'll go to game five between Daniel and Lion. Which one comes out on top? Daniel sticking Octane. Not going to go to the Dandroid Fennec that I think a lot of fans of Daniel are potentially excited in seeing. Maybe he's saving Dandroid for future rounds, or maybe he's given up on Dandroid and has decided that Fennec is the way to win, or sorry, Octane is the way to win. He's going to start this game with that classic keeping the ball speed high and everything works out. I'm going to slam it off the backboard and slam a power shot and there's probably a low chance that Lion can save it. And the reason why I bring this up is I really don't think that a lot of ones players, even at the top level, are playing it like that. 
you know, first killer yesterday was, and, and some of the guys who love to play speedy do, but most players, when given a kickoff win like that, aren't just booming it at the back wall and then going for a shot afterwards. Lion Blaze. Bounce dribble. He's looked good in these carry positions when he gets Daniel into a shadow. He's gonna have a tough time collecting this ball and finding an angle, so now he's forced to shadow back to his net. Daniel with no boost into the corner. Lion Blaze certainly gonna go air dribble bump, and in fact, way too certainly was gonna go air dribble bump. It was a bit too obvious from everybody watching this play, including Daniel, that the air dribble bump was coming. So he got to pre-jump it very early and get over the top of it. Daniel electing to play possession with limited boost and they actually forced Lion Blaze to not be able to get boost of his own. Worried about what Daniel could do and he's gonna take this up high to the backboard where he thought he could evade the low boost Lion Blaze, but Lion does get the save. Daniel immediately back up to another dribble. He's going to grab 100 here, and the first touch is not as good as he would have liked. He's trying to put pressure on Lion and get as quick a shots as possible. The faster he rushes this ball back to net, the more likely Lion's going to be playing on zero boost. Did Lion save, if, if Lion saved this, it was going to be insane. Daniel did a really good job. Uh, and actually, Lion had 37. That actually surprises me. That flip almost pushed Daniel off the line. But it is going to be a Daniel goal. Lion's going to be able to control this one. Will he go for another carry? I don't know why he wouldn't with the way they've been working him. Daniel actually knows that he doesn't want Lion to go for a carry either. He recovers from his half and gets on the ball before Lion's able to do anything with it. Once again, Daniel early challenges. It's going to be on Lion to collect the ball as quickly as possible so that he can punish these early challenges. Daniel's, of course, doing a good job of recognizing when it's safe and when it otherwise isn't to attack Lion as he sets up these dribbles. Lion has the catch now. The angle here, though, is not really available. and it, It's tough to resist the shot, but that was a high likelihood that it goes in favor of Daniel. Might have needed to be a fake and a low 50 of some sort. Still not likely to go his way, but far more likely to not result in a Daniel goal. This is a read from Daniel, potentially. Because Daniel was doing, on these diagonal kickoffs, a lot of pushing to the side. And maybe recognizing that Lion Blaze has been reading that and just delaying it. This time, Daniel will roll it straight in. Lion's going to get one right back, though. Assuming he didn't miss here, but he did miss! So he won't get one right back. And halfway through this game, Daniel starting to pull away these camera checks. Look at this, he's staring down Lion Blaze. I can't tell if he was doing it just as, you know, a look back disrespect or if he was genuinely at first curious whether or not Lion Blaze was gonna get back. At the end there, he's definitely just staring him down, but 6-1. I mean, we're only barely over halfway through the game, which means Lion should be able, in theory, to match what Daniel's done. And not a bad start. Delay kickoff works much better this time. Exactly how he would hope it to. As he taps it directly into Daniel's net. Daniel's not even going to mess with the kickoff anymore. Not a bad idea with a lead to prevent immediate goals or maybe even, you know, get your own. Lion Blaze. Might need to start taking that ball into his corner if he's not able to expose Daniel off the dribble, which is really tough to do, especially if you recognize the fake late. Don't save yourself a ton of boost. Oh, well, I mean, that's also a good way to score. You never know when Daniel's just going to go flying past the ball. I'm not sure that you can bank on Daniel doing this that often. Daniel just had a completely different read on the angle Lion was taking. Daniel trying to slot 
top shelf cannot do so and Lion actually able to come away with his boost as well so might be able to end the torture that Daniel's been able to keep him in a ton in the past this time it'll only be a couple shot attempts before Lion's back in control and getting bumped a couple times by Daniel not going to be the worst thing in the world now a bit of chicken between these two on who's going to jump first Lion does and Daniel stays patient I believe he stays grounded this whole way right yeah, he does. He just fakes Lion out. Like I said, it, it was a game of chicken. If Lion could stay grounded that whole time, he would have been okay. Because assuming Daniel was just waiting for him to jump. But he felt like he had to jump right then and there. He thought a shot was coming. And lost the game. Daniel. Wow, what a catch. Just to give it a bit extra speed. 9-3. Starting to get a bit out of hand for Lion Blaze. Oh, Daniel could have just gotten a 10th, but he didn't take it. If Lion Blaze isn't going to force him to take it, then he probably won't. But now, instead of having a 10th, it's still 9-3 with a minute left to go. Daniel quick to regain control of the ball. Passing it to Lion right before taking it away. He's starting to get back, especially in these final moments to that. As long as the ball is moving quickly, I've got faith in myself to figure it out. Daniel stealing this corner all but seals it. If it wasn't already sealed, Lion trying to work on limited boost is not going to be able to make six straight goals. So Daniel, closer than his previous match against Lion Blaze. But he is going to come out on top and work his way into the semis for a chance to play, I believe, against Jack or Evo. And based on what I'm reading in chat, I have a feeling... That it's gonna be Jack. Lion's gonna get a constellation here. Six seconds on the clock. We'll let it run down as Daniel does his best to own goal, which he does perfectly. GG's! Daniel moves on to the semis tomorrow. Lion Blaze left empty-handed.